Looking for a new hobby? Have you tried painting? Some U.S. chief executives have taken up painting as a hobby in retirement to challenge themselves after having summited the political mountaintop. Here are the top five U.S. presidents who paint. I'm Bob Summers, and this is The Presidential Story. Jumping into the number five spot is John F. Kennedy. JFK was known for many things, but among them was his love of sailing and his partiality for doodling. And many times, those doodles turned into sailboats. During the 1960 presidential campaign, and was moved enough to paint some boating scenes there. Two of those watercolors, titled Marine Bridge from Sheepshead Bay, New York, and Sheepshead Bay, New York, were both signed JFK 60 and donated to a friend and campaign contributor in Beverly Hills. Eventually, they made their way to auction in 2013, where the pair sold for $126,000. Another painting by Kennedy, for which I could not find a title, sold at auction for $162,000 in 2017. Number four may come as a surprise, Civil War General Ulysses S. Grant. During Grant's second and third years as a cadet in the U.S. Military Academy at West Point, he, like all officers in training, were required to take drawing classes. It was important for officers to be able to sketch accurate maps of the surrounding landscapes, including notable features such as water sources, enemy force deployments, and fortifications. During peacetime, topographical maps were created to help engineers locate and construct roads, bridges, and railroads. This skill was so vitally important to an officer's success that the academy's curriculum allowed two hours a day, five days a week, toward these classes. And they brought in an internationally respected instructor, Robert Walter Weir. Weir was a New York native who had studied art in both New York and Florence, Italy. During his 42-year career at the Military Academy, Weir also produced his own paintings, the most famous of which is The Embarkation of the Pilgrims, which was finished at around the same time as Grant's graduation. This painting currently hangs in the rotunda of the U.S. Capitol building. Grant enjoyed drawing and painting and looked to Weir as a mentor. Many of Grant's works still exist, either in private collections or in museums. When Grant was 18, he painted a watercolor landscape for his girlfriend at the time, Kate Lowe. Grant kept his painting of a Native American trader until the 1870s, when he gave it to his former Secretary of the Navy, Adolf Borey. Today, it is on display at the Museum of the U.S. Military Academy in West Point, New York. Despite Grant's early interest in art, once he graduated from the Military Academy, there is no indication he drew or painted in his later years. Showing up at number three, Jimmy Carter. When one of Carter's friends in the Navy set off for duty, he left behind a learned paint kit. A young Carter could not let it go to waste. He used the kit to teach himself the art of oil painting. Years later, after leaving the presidency, Carter took up painting in his free time. From his woodworking shop turned art studio, Carter painted over 100 paintings, specializing in vibrant scenic and naturalistic imagery. Each year, the Carter Center, which seeks to prevent and resolve conflicts, enhance freedom and democracy, and improve health, organizes a fundraiser. The most popular draw each year tends to be Carter's original artwork. In 2012, a Carter original painting, Live Oak at Sunrise, sold at auction for $250,000. In 2019, Monarchs and Milkweed sold for $525,000. And in 2022, Great Egret sold for $2.1 million. Number two is Dwight D. Eisenhower. In 1948, while president of Columbia University, Eisenhower observed Thomas E. Stevens painting a portrait of his wife, Mamie, with interest and curiosity he was intrigued by the challenge of learning to paint. Stevens optimistically sent Eisenhower a complete painting kit. Although Eisenhower appreciated the gift, he thought it a sheer waste of money because he felt that he lacked the one quality necessary to become a painter, ability. While Mamie and Stevens toured the Eisenhower residence to find the perfect place to hang her portrait, 
Eisenhower got his aide to help him stretch a white dust cloth for a canvas to the bottom of a box. Then he tried to copy the picture. He showed the group what he had done. Eisenhower described his efforts as weird and wonderful to behold, adding that we all laughed heartily. But Eisenhower was hooked. Stevens asked for Eisenhower's attempt as a keepsake and was given it without hesitation. Eisenhower was 58 years old when he started to paint seriously. Perhaps he was influenced by his doctor, who advised him to take up a leisurely pursuit as a way of relieving stress. Or perhaps he was influenced by his good friend and avid painter, Winston Churchill. Writing to Churchill in 1950, Eisenhower said, I have a lot of fun since I took it up, in my somewhat miserable way, your hobby of painting. I have had no instruction, have no talent, and certainly no justification for covering nice white canvas with the kind of daubs that seem constantly to spring from my brushes. Nevertheless, I like it tremendously, and in fact have produced two or three things that I like enough to keep. Eisenhower claimed that while president, he had more time to paint because his time was better scheduled. This time to create art provided him with a needed form of relaxation. His subjects were usually landscapes, seascapes, or still lifes, reflecting his love of nature and his desire for peace and tranquility. And he wanted to share this tranquility with others. Some of his paintings were used to make prints, to give as Christmas gifts to White House staff members and friends. One other way to share his love of painting was to take a page out of his inspiration, Thomas Stevens' playbook. Eisenhower would present paint-by-number kits to Oval Office visitors and ask them to bring it back when it was finished. As he got older, the physical demands of Eisenhower's favorite pastime, golf, and his weakened heart made for more idle hours he could dedicate to painting. As comedian Bob Hope joked, President Eisenhower has given up golf for painting. It takes fewer strokes. Those strokes did find some success. In 1967, Eisenhower traveled to New York to visit an exhibition of his paintings at the Huntington Hartford Museum. Richard Cohen, a reporter who spoke with him that day, was impressed with his charm but was hesitant to praise the paintings themselves. When asked about the symbolism of one of his works, Eisenhower responded sharply, Let's get something straight here, Cohen. They would have burned this a long time ago if I weren't the President of the United States. Over the last 20 years of his life, Eisenhower completed more than 260 paintings. Most of those were given to family and friends. Coming in at number one, George W. Bush. Bush began painting after he retired, inspired by Churchill's publication, Painting as a Pastime, which outlined reasons to paint that appealed to him. First, Churchill specifically recommended the cultivation of a hobby to public figures as a means for alleviating the worry and mental overstrain by persons who, over prolonged periods, have to bear exceptional responsibilities. Churchill also described painting as a serious hobby that provides discipline and purpose, especially for those unfortunate people who can command everything they want and are thereby subject to boredom resulting from the too easy satiation of their desires. In addition, Churchill noted that painting does not require the physical exertion of sports. It keeps pace even with feeble steps and holds her canvas as screen between us and the surly advance of decrepitude. At first, no one knew Bush was painting, but in early 2013, that changed when a hacker broke into Bush's sister's email and discovered two self-portraits of the former president. The first was of him in the shower, and the second was of his legs in the bathtub. Critics had a lot of material to work with. At first, Bush really liked to paint dogs. I mean, he really liked it. He painted over 50 dogs. His best-known dog painting is of his family dog, Barney, which was published alongside the obituary for the late Scottish Terrier in 2013. Eventually, he wanted a new challenge, so he expanded to cats, landscapes, churches, fruit, and the aforementioned self-portraits. Bush has had many mentors from the local Texas art scene. They describe him as passionate, hardworking, and open to instruction, an ideal student. Like any skill, it takes practice. It is said that he paints over 100 paintings a year, and it shows in his evolution as an artist. For the last several years, Bush has focused on portraitures. He started with world leaders like Tony Blair and Vladimir Putin. In an interview about his portraits of world leaders, Bush acknowledged that his signature was worth more than his paintings, 
which is why he signed his paintings with an enigmatic 43. Today, he doesn't sign them at all. He wants the paintings valued on their own terms. Then one of his teachers suggested he paint people less famous than the world leaders. This gave him the idea to paint wounded veterans, which he collected into a New York Times bestseller. One critic called it an act of penance for the war he led. Proceeds from Portraits of Courage, a commander-in-chief's tribute to America's warriors, go to the nonprofit George W. Bush Institute's Veteran Wellness Alliance. His next New York Times bestselling book of portraits is of immigrants to remind us of the countless ways in which America has been strengthened by those who have come here in search of a better life. Proceeds from Out of Many, One benefit organizations that help immigrants resettle, as well as the nonprofit George W. Bush Institute. Bush's painting improvement has impressed his family. He's really gotten good, said former First Lady Laura Bush. I'm shocked. Thanks for watching.